What's up, fam? I'm Ryan Milton from Team Flex. You're on my show, Gains a Clock, every single Friday. I come right here on Team Flex TV to give you the Q&A series, where basically you guys ask me whatever you want, and I give you my answers. And the whole idea behind the show is if you got a question, hopefully somebody else needed that answer, and so on and so forth. All right, so we're going to get into these. I got 10 great questions for you today. Do me a favor real quick though, please subscribe to this channel and share out the video. I'm Ryan Milton from Team Flex. You are on Gains of Clock. Alright fam, I'm gonna cut right to the chase. We got 10 questions, all kinds of different stuff, some competition stuff, quarantine stuff, nutrition stuff, it's all in here, alright? A lot of questions, I wanna get to it and hit you guys with these as fast as I can, hopefully you get something out of it, alright? Question number one comes from Ashley. It says, can training at home actually produce results? I've been doing what I can, but it just doesn't feel the same as the gym. And obviously, Ashley here, she's somebody that must not, uh, they must not have the gym. They're in quarantine right now. Their gyms are closed. A lot of places have actually reinstated their stay-at-home orders as far as the gym goes and things like that. Many states now. And a lot of places in the world honestly stayed that way. So uh, anybody out there, if that's you, Yes, you can, okay? I'll tell you guys, I took a lot of clients through this whole span of time, right? This whole crazy pandemic. We've taken a lot of clients on Team Flex from literally, you know, being oh, in the gym to the next day, no gym. And it stayed like that for months and weeks and whatever. And, you know, everybody was worried about it. Could they get results? Were they going to be able to go, you know, even if they didn't have equipment? Could they still maintain? Could they build? Could they grow? Could they lean out? And I'll tell you what, we had hundreds and hundreds of people come out of it better than when they actually went in. That means through the quarantine, through minimal equipment, through doing all that, they were able to still progress, able to still train, able to still stay on track, and the body did not, you know, in other words, go to nothing, right? It didn't waste away. It actually came out of it better as long as you stayed on track. So even if it's tough, you know, motivation-wise, things like that, I get it, whatever. It's not the same as the gym, but it doesn't need to be the same as the gym. For you to get results, you got to do the work, okay? Eat your meal, stay on your macro, stay on track, and then train, all right? And whatever equipment you got, make the most of it. If you want help, anybody watching, teamffelex.com right now, I can help you out. Go subscribe to our free trial. All right, question number two here, what's the best way to stop snacking? I try to focus on my nutrition plan, but find myself over snacking, especially at night. This question comes from Brittany. Brittany, so here's the thing about uh, snacking. A lot of times it comes from the fact that you are either dehydrated or you didn't prepare properly. In other words, you didn't plan out your nutrients. You didn't plan out your meals for the day, okay? When it comes to actually eating your food and doing all this, one way I say combat your snacking, for one, make sure you're on top of your water, okay? Make sure you are really dialing that in, staying on track with it all throughout the day. You know, a lot of times when you're feeling like you might want to have a snack, you might actually just be dehydrated. Your body doesn't actually perceive hunger and thirst that differently and a lot of times it will confuse them. So if you're actually thirsty, you can feel hungry and so on and so forth, right? So, you know, try to get some water and see how you feel then and stay on top of your water. Now, the next thing is to plan in advance out your day, all right? A lot of times when you start snacking, it's because maybe you missed a meal or you just, your timing is off or whatever, something happened in the day. If you plan in advance out your macros or your meals or whatever, then it becomes a a lot easier to actually execute them, a lot easier to stay on track, and a lot easier to, in other words, not snack. And that's really going to be a great combination for you there, Brittany. So try that out. Let me know how it works. Question number three, how often should you weigh yourself to track weight loss? This question comes from Joey. Joey, so here's the gig about weight loss in general, okay? Weight loss is a variable term, fat loss, you know, all these different things. But the point is you don't actually want to do it as often as, you know, people think. A lot of, you know, the smart scales and things like that and whatever even apps these days are telling you to weigh in daily well if you weigh in daily you're gonna see a lot of fluctuation and this is probably also one of the reasons you're asking me this question because you see the scale changing so much and I know it happens that way I have my clients weigh in either once every week or once every other week and you know for that matter that seems to be the best fit for most people um, realistically what I'm looking at during that time is making sure that our athletes our clients they do the weigh 
beans on the same day, the same time of day, in the same circumstances with the same scale, and you know, try to make it as similar as possible, really, to make sure the environment is not dictating our result. But literally, if you get on scale every day, you're gonna see this line going up and down. You're gonna lose, you're gonna gain, you're gonna gain more, you're gonna lose, and you know, it gets to be crazy in your head, it gets to be annoying, and you know, see that and worry that you're not on track and you're not doing the right thing, but in reality, your progress doesn't necessarily ever happen linear, it never does. I've trained thousands and thousands of clients, I've never seen linear weight loss this way, or linear weight gain for that matter. What I always have seen is a graph of basically, it looks like a two year old with a crayon on a table. You know what I mean? So basically what you gotta do here is, uh, I would say once a week, maybe even every other week, and just get on, check it out, see what's going on. And the other thing to pay attention to is the trend over time. Don't just make any dramatic changes based on a seven day or anything like that. You gotta let things work, you gotta see what the trend looks like, right? I'm talking about these ups and downs, the trend is what matters the most. Let's see what we got here next. Question number four, Angelica says, I'm having a hard time deciding if I should stay on track to compete this year or just take the rest of 2020 off. Uh, for off season basically. Do you have any advice? Yeah, there's a lot of competitors in your spot. Obviously a lot of people are you know, very uncertain. There was a lot of shows that got canceled, a lot of things that got postponed, people were in preps for shows that never happened or they got moved or it didn't work, you know, all these things. And uh, with that, we're still in the middle of a pandemic, everybody, and everybody, you know, things are changing every day. Different places are closing, different things are opening, all kinds of different areas are doing different stuff. And so this is something that a lot of competitors are wondering about a lot of people. I have this conversation with my athletes and clients literally every week. Uh, you know, every day I probably talk to somebody about this at this point. But basically, what I keep saying is you got to really look at the two things that you always got to look at when you're competing. For one, the shows that you want to do, and you know, if you which ones you pick, basically getting a competition schedule. And honestly, when it comes to competition schedule, a lot of people focus too much on a date. They focus too much on a specific show when, in reality, there's a lot of different shows going on, a lot of different dates, even if these things move, change, whatever, they're still happening in a lot of cases just on a different time frame. And even if they're not, there's probably one very close that it will happen. You guys, these shows are happening. Some are changing still. Some are, you know, maybe going to be canceled. Who knows? But the point is there are shows that are happening. We've seen it. I'm training people for them. They're going on. That's the way it is. So you, what you got to look at is that first off, figure out if there's a competition that works for your schedule, see what's around it, and then be willing to be flexible. You know, if you need to change it, last minute, you need to push another week out, another two out, whatever, you could have a backup plan, in other words, to make sure that that's something possible for you. The next thing you got to look at is the other thing you always got to look at when you're competing, your actual personal life. Does your personal life, you know, facilitate a competition environment for you right now? A lot of people are getting laid off. A lot of people, you know, not getting the same work. A lot of people have been, you know, dealing with all these different problems and maybe it's just too hectic right now to be thinking about competing. And so you got to look at that. Or maybe you're in a spot where you weren't that affected you had a job throughout this whole thing you've been doing fine you know you got extra money the stimulus check is calling your name for registration you know whatever it doesn't matter everybody's in a different spot but you got to look at these two things and then you got to say all right where am I at what am I doing what do I want to be doing do I want to be putting up some money to go compete do I want to do the show really bad right now or am I in a spot where maybe it's not the best decision for me my personal life blah 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 either way there is no wrong answer ladies and gents there is just an answer that is right or wrong for you and you got to figure figure that out. You got to know what that is. And either way, you got to understand, hey, even if you have to go to off season because you've been, you know, financially just taxed or you don't have a job or whatever it is, or you don't want to travel, you're worried about traveling thing. I know everybody's got a different spot, a different idea. It's okay to say that and compete, you know, train right now, off season to compete when you can compete when it gets back, compete later down the line. You know, look at shows later this year. There's a lot of stuff going on. Who knows what will be happening in this world by that time or early next year now at this point 
even not too far stretch out. So realistically, you got to look at what's right for you. A lot of people are going to stay on prep. A lot of people will compete. There will be those that do not. And that's okay too, because when the stage, when you're ready, in other words, the stage is going to be there for you. All right. Question number five right here. And remember, we got 10 guys. So we're hitting about halfway right now. I know it's a lot of talking, but hopefully you're getting something out of it here. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet. Uh, this is from Tiffany. Is it bad to do two cardio sessions a day? I'm currently doing a weight session, a fasted cardio, as well as a post-workout cardio. My goal is to lose fat as fast as possible. Thanks. All right, so right out the gate, yes, way too much. Tell you straight up, it's way too much. Don't do it. Two, it's bad. It's bad news bears. I know a lot of people push this. A lot of coaches push this. A lot of people do this. But you'll get short-term results. In the, in the short term, sure, you will lose a lot of weight. You will lose a lot of weight doing that, doing all this activity, doing all this. I'm assuming you're probably dieting too. So, you know, you're out here doing basically three hours, maybe more of workouts, basically between cardio and training, you know, in a caloric deficit, yeah, you'll get some, you'll lose some weight, but you're not going to actually maintain it in the long haul. This is why, ladies and gents, remember the statistics, 95% of diets in the long haul fail, and that be, that's because when you look at it in a span of time, they rebound it, they come back, they do it again, because whatever they got was short-lived. So in reality, if you're trying to go for the shortest possible way to get your results for the shortest amount of time, what you're doing is great. But if you're actually trying to lose weight and keep it off and live a new lifestyle, what you're doing is terrible. Basically what you got to do, Tiffany, is get yourself in a caloric deficit, train with your weights, and see how you do. I wouldn't even add cardio in right away. I would just make sure your calories, your macros, your proteins, carbs, fats, all that are in the right spot, and then train in the gym and have good built workouts You know that are going to get you, obviously, your results. But see where you're at and try to add in cardio only sparingly, all right? I mean, I'm never, in my career, I've never given someone two hours of cardio a day plus weights or anything like that. I've never even come close to that, uh, you know, especially in a caloric deficit because I know that that will just literally ruin that client. That will ruin their hormones, their metabolism, their results, okay? So it's just not counterintuitive. It's not the fastest way. It's the fastest way to burn yourself out and, you know, have to rebound and not be in a good spot. So definitely would say change that. Question number six, I have such a hard time getting all my water in. It's just so boring to drink and I'm so busy every day, I just don't remember to do it. Do you have any tips for that from Shelly? Shelly, yes I do. Water is one of these things that you gotta have. It's gonna accelerate all your results the best you get in. A lot of people have a hard time doing this. So here's the thing, for most women, three-fourths of a gallon to a gallon is probably a good amount of water to drink in a day. The simplest way I say to do this is to get a container that holds that much water. Get a three-fourths of a gallon or a gallon and then just get it and have it and this is step one okay you have the container you fill it up now what you want to do is something I've been talking about for years and now I'm seeing it at stores which is awesome but you can you can do it two ways you need to either write on the jug yourself some different times of day starting with like 7 a.m. you know 9 and 10 and you know you go down the thing from the morning being the top of your your container for water to the bottom being the end of your day and you can do it this way, write it on with a pen or whatever, or, you know, sometimes I've even seen these in the store now, which is crazy because I've been doing this for years. But basically what it does is it allows you to look over at the jug or whatever container of water you got and see where you're at in the timeline, right? So if you're at work, it's sitting on your desk and you see it's noon, you're about to have lunch and you look over at your gallon and you're only at 9 a.m., well, you know you got to drink. And the goal here is to drink your water and hit these time slots every time. This is, you know, for a lot of people, very simple to do once they actually do that bit of work, get the jug, get the, you know, the container, and get the times on it but a lot of people still you know like you said you're busy you're too busy maybe you don't notice so what you can do is also set some alerts either on your desktop your computer or on your phone to be like hey it's nine o'clock you got to drink water hey it's 12 o'clock you know got to drink water whatever it's simple to do to set an alert and a lot of people be like oh that's ridiculous well you get a thousand alerts a day from Instagram or whatever so you might as well have an alert for your own damn health to tell you to drink your water okay so that's my best suggestion there hopefully that works let me know how that goes uh, um, question number seven. How does a competitor know which division is the best one for them to start in? Can't seem to figure out where I should start. 
no name here, but yeah, basically for a division, uh, you gotta look, I always do this with everybody, I say first off, you need a physique assessment. You need to know where you're at. You need to know with where you're at right now, what kind of stuff you got naturally that could help you. Sometimes the genetics of your actual muscle mass or your muscle base, you know, having not trained for a comp yet, can kind of indicate where you should be. Now, a lot of times, uh, you know, with women, you're gonna start with bikini for the most part, unless you're already pretty jacked, you know, pretty juiced up, and that's kind of because bikini Bikini tends to be the intro level into the women's side of the bodybuilding space. Um, in the men's physique, you know, in the men's side, in other words, I just gave it away, but men's physique would be a starting place for a lot of men that want to compete because, you know, the other classes that carry more muscle, all that stuff. So basically what happens is you're looking at, you know, first off, what do you have naturally? What do you best fit? Some people will be outliers, by the way. Some guys will do best in bodybuilding right away. Some women will do best in figure right away, and that's because of their own genetics. So a lot of times you can find that in a physique assessment and see kind of where you're at, what could be done, where you need to be, and blah, blah, blah. That helps a lot. The next thing I would say is you got to go with your own personal preference too. What do you like best as somebody who wants to compete? When you're looking at these classes, do your research. You know, go watch some shows. Watch the Olympia. Uh, watch the Arnold's YouTube and check these things out. Go to a show live if you can, you know, and just see the competitors on stage and watch all the classes and see which one do you like best. What, you know, the posing's all different. The, the in a lot of ways, the presentation is a lot different. A lot of things are different in each one of these different divisions and so if you go and you watch, you get a look, maybe you should be like, I would like to do that. Oh no, I wouldn't like to do that. And you can kind of hone in there right there. Um, but you know, the third thing I would say is if you have a coach who hopefully they're doing physique assessments, hopefully they also know which one you would prefer because they talked to you about it. And then hopefully finally they can help direct you towards the best division for you because basically at the end of the day, you don't want to compete in a division that's not going to serve you well and you will eventually find that out too which would be number four on this topic, go get some judges' feedback. See what they tell you. A lot of times if you get on stage and you're a bikini girl and you clearly should have been in wellness or figure or somewhere else, they're going to tell you, hey, you might be better in here. Same goes for guys in the male divisions. So, you know, that's the kind of step-by-step -step process, physique assessment, your personal preference, get a coach that helps you, and then get judges' feedback, okay? All right, let's roll to question number eight. A couple more to go, fam. Appreciate you being here. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And remember, if anybody needs help with anything, go to my website, teamffelex.com, for a free coaching trial. Okay, question comes from Angelo. What's the best advice for someone having a hard time getting a men's physique back pose down? Every time I pose, I cannot seem to get my lats to fire. All right, this happens to a lot of people. So this is actually relevant information for you figure competitors, you know, women's physique, all that over there too. Um, but basically, the lats, a lot of people have a hard time firing up their lat. You know, it's kind of behind you, it's not as easy as looking at your bicep and flexing it. It's hard to figure out where your lats are, especially when you can't see yourself. You know, when you do your back pose, you can't see what you actually look like you kind of got to memorize it you know take videos pictures all that or get a posing coach but basically tips for practicing this um, really is you got to start getting some activation into the lats so a lot of times what I like to have people do is actually take a lacrosse ball or some other hard type of ball you know a lot of people would say tennis ball but I'm not a huge fan of that it's not really hard enough you need a hard ball so get a lacrosse ball you know baseball something like that and then what you want to do is put it on your back pin it up against the wall and you're just gonna roll around on it and you're gonna kind of dig that thing into all your different traps, your rhomboids, your scapula, you know, your lats, all that. You dig this in there and you work about a minute or so each side, do a couple sets of that. And uh, a lot of times right after that, you can try to hit a back pose and you just feel something totally different going on. And basically what you're doing is you're waking up these muscles in your back, you're waking up the myofascial tissues, you're getting all this kind of nerve endings excited back there that help you really hit that pose because that's really what posing is. It's muscle control, it's the ability to hold the position we want to get in, but if you can't connect to the muscles, it's not going to work. One way you can think of this is like, you know, if you guys have ever used your GPS and you've been in a bad cell signal, you know, the GPS might not fully load or it's pixelated or whatever and, you know, it's fuzzy. You don't know where the, you can't see where to go. You can't follow the directions. Well, the same kind of thing happens to your body with your muscles and your overall organism, in other words, if you don't have the right stuff firing up and the right information and the rolling is almost like you're scrubbing away some of that, you know, blurriness on the map or whatever. 
whatever that's going to give you an idea. So again, get yourself a ball that's really hard. Get on the wall, pin it into your back, roll around on it, dig in deep. It should hurt. It will hurt. It's going to hurt. And if it starts to not hurt, you need to lay on the floor and do the same thing. All right. That will definitely help you fire up the back pose though. The another thing I would say, if you're still having a hard time with that, get a posing coach and combine these two things. Work with the coach that can help you dial that in really get it you know activated for you and teach you what it feels like there's a number of different practices I do but I would say first one is to start with that rolling all right let's go question number nine I'm gonna keep you guys just pumping and rolling right along every time I do a big lift example deadlifts and squats I have terrible back pain after all of my friends in the gym said I need to do them or not be able to build or maintain my muscle is this true question comes from Jessica Jessica it is and it isn't true okay everybody is different every single person is different obviously if you're getting back pain from doing any exercise you're probably you know not doing it correctly or maybe it's not a good exercise for you for example maybe you need to change your form you need to widen up your squat do a sumo deadlift instead of you know these things but really no it's not going to necessarily take away your muscle or make it hard it make it harder for you to necessarily build it or maintain it but it's not going to take it away in other words you know a lot of people that I've worked with over the years have gone through various injuries or whatever not even related let's say to actually training in a gym but they might not be able to use a certain body part for a while but a lot of times you can find a specific exercise that will work okay you know blah 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 so basically to answer your question very quickly uh, no it's not going to necessarily mean that but you do need to find exercises that are going to correlate to training in the same fashion you know figure out stuff you can do that's going to hit the same kind of stuff these compounds would however you don't need to actually do them all the time year round every week every day to actually maintain or build muscle you need a really good built program honestly that's going to be able to show you hey here's how you can still get those results and do those things if you need help honestly go to my website teamffelex.com same goes for anyone else out there question number 10 i'm gonna roll right in and we are done fam i appreciate you being here please make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet this question comes from kelly what is the best exercise to build glutes and this is a good exercise get asked it all the time i will tell you right out the gate it depends on the person i wouldn't necessarily give a blanket statement but if you really wanted me to i'm gonna combine two of them all right i'm gonna combine the hip thrust and the squat and I'm not saying, you know, make a phantom weird exercise, Frankenstein exercise. I'm saying you got to do both these things to really develop a good set of glutes. And basically, here's how I'd suggest it. Start with hip thrusts and, you know, do those. Get the barbell moving. Do all that stuff. Really focus on your tempo and your tension and make sure you have good form here. And then do back squats, barbell back squats, okay? And these two things combined are super, super human builders for really good glute development, okay? And I can't give you a one particular exercise because you can't just do one exercise and get results you can literally do any exercise and just try to get results but the reason I'm saying do these two things together is because the, the hip thrust I find really really get good activation out of the glute and then when you go to squats you can actually hit it even harder than you normally would right because a lot of people they spend time like me I've been sitting here for 30 minutes doing this video well the longer you sit on your butt the harder it is to actually activate it so then you go do back squats and things like that your quads just keep growing and growing and growing it's because you basically you know same as we were talking about back poses earlier uh, the muscles not working it's not firing it's asleep so if you actually train a different exercise to activate it first then you take it over here these this combination is great hip thrust back squats do that and you know let me know how it goes get very strong with these things do low reps do high reps do all sorts of reps and different tempos protocols all those things and if you want to actually just get a better workout program in general for this go to my website subscribe to my free trial teamffelex.com I'll show you what to do that would be way more beneficial than giving you this basic two exercise right here that you could try all right uh thank you guys that's it we made it we got another one down another gains clocker i'm basically losing my freaking voice again over here i appreciate you all being here appreciate you watching hopefully you got something out of this if you did please subscribe to the channel and then share out the video because other people need the information that you learned today too all right thank you for being here checking this out i'm ryan milton from team flex this was gains clock i'll be back monday with protein power. Thanks for watching. Coach Rye is out.